Good morning, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this Unity tutorial on how to make a hierarchical finite state machine for 2D player movement in less than 30 minutes. In this tutorial we're gonna see how to improve the basic FSM we made in a previous tutorial and how to turn it into a hierarchical FSM. Are you ready? Then let's dive in! <laughs> In a previous tutorial, we saw how to implement the state pattern in Unity. We designed a little basic finite state machine to have a 2D player movement. The state machine just has two states for now. You can be either in idle or in moving mode. What we want to do today is to improve this state machine to add a new jumping state. I'm gonna build upon the last project, so you should definitely take a look at the first tutorial in order to get the same starting base as I do. Now the way we're gonna add this jumping state is by turning our basic FSM into a hierarchical FSM. Hierarchical FSMs are a way of grouping together several states that are similar in terms of either inputs or update logic so that one input can be used in several states without repeating your code. So this way you have some sort of substates of a general state and in our case we're going to have a general grounded state that is valid both for idle and for moving states and we're going to say that idle and moving states are substates of this grounded state. So this way we're going to be able to transition from either idle or moving to jumping. In order to do that the first thing you want to look at is the idea of layer. In Unity, you have little layers that you can assign your objects on. They are shown over here. And so on our ground object, remember that this is, this is just a 2D sprite we created last time. And this object, we wanted to put it on a specific layer. The reason we want to do that is because layers are a way of optimizing Unity physics computations. So that rather checking against all the colliders in your scene when you want to check for specific collisions or interactions, you can only focus on a specific subpart, uh, a sub hierarchy in your scene that is on a specific layer. And this way you don't have to do all the checks, you just do the checks that you need. So to add this layer, just go over here to layer and click on add layer. This will take you to your project settings in the layers panel. You see here that we have some predefined layers that are created by Unity, but we have some space for our own user layers. Let's go to user layer six and just create a new layer called ground. And what you want to make sure of is that you actually assign this layer to your object. So select your ground object and here we've just created the layer for now we haven't assigned it. Here you have to make sure that you go to layer and that you click ground to select our brand new layer. And so now this object is on a specific layer, meaning that we'll be able to tell Unity do some raycast or some interaction or some collision checks, but only with objects on this given layer. And it will significantly reduce the number of calculations to do, and so it will be much more efficient for your game. All right, now let's go back to our Visual Studio and take care of this grounded state that we want to add to our state machine. Remember, it's the big state that encompasses both idle and moving. So it will be a parent class for the idle and moving state, and it will be able to handle transitioning from grounded to jumping. So to make this state, we're gonna go ahead and start from our moving state. And we're just gonna copy this file and paste it right here. And we're gonna rename it to grounded. So when you do that, make sure that you also rename the class, the constructor, and the name. Except that for the name, since this state is kind of an intermediary, it won't be actually any real state for a machine. It's just a group of states. We don't want it to have a specific name. Instead, we want it to pass on the name of the child state to um, the base state constructor. So here we're gonna add string name and we're gonna pass in this name here. 
So once again, this is because we don't want our state machine to have a grounded state. We want it to have states that are derived from the grounded state. But those states are actually going to be called idle or moving. None of them is going to be called grounded. And now what we want to do is to have our idle and moving states inherit from this grounded state so that both of them are able to transition to jump. So let's go to idle and say that instead of idle base state, we have idle grounded. And now in the constructor, we don't have to change anything because we're simply passing on the name and the grounded constructor will got it to the base state constructor itself. Similarly for the moving class, we want it to inherit from grounded and all the rest works the same. Now you can see that I've copied the SM private variable we had before and I'm just going to turn it protected so that both my child classes can access it too. So I'm going to say it's protected here. And this way I don't have to uh, worry about this in moving anymore. So I can just get rid of this and this and I still have access to this uh, in the rest of my script because I'm inheriting it from the grounded class. All right, so the grounded class doesn't really care about horizontal input. It won't be touching our horizontal velocity. So we can get rid of that. And here, and we also want to remove this sprite renderer color initialization because the grounded state in itself doesn't change the color. It's only its child classes that will. We can also get rid of that and get rid of that for now. So for now, you might think that this class is pretty useless because it's just basically repeating what its base class, so the base state class is doing. Uh, but this is because we need to add uh, the input that will transition this grounded state, uh, whether it's the idle or the moving derived class, uh, we want it to transition from grounded state to jumping when we press the space bar. We can actually get rid of the enter and the update physics methods because we won't be overriding those. But in the update logic, what we want to do is after we've done the basic stuff, we want to check if we're currently getting um, an input. So it's get key because uh, we want an actual key code. So if we have get key down with the key code of space, this is, am I pressing space bar? So if I am, I actually want to say that my state machine is going to change state to the SM version. So this is my movement SM derived class, the one that has my actual state list. I want to go to my jumping state. So we haven't created that one yet. Uh, let's take care of this. Let's go back to our movement SM. And here I want to add a new variable that will be hidden in the inspector and that's a public jumping jumping state. And so now we need to actually create the state class. For this, I'm just going to copy our brand new grounded class. So let's go to this and let's once again copy and pass our script and we'll rename this to jumping. Remember to rename both the class and the constructor. And here we won't be getting any name from a child class. So we we'll revert back to our basic um, hard coded value here. All right, there are three things that we need to do. The first thing we want to do is update the logic so that um, if we are grounded, we go back to our idle state. We are not going back to the grounded state because once again, there isn't actually a grounded state per se. We only have derived grounded states. Um, and we are just going to arbitrarily say that we revert to the idle state and not the moving state because it's the most logical choice when you want to reset things, you just go back to your initial state. So we're first going to have a little boolean here that says whether we're grounded or not. And we're going to compute this during our update physics phase. And so we're going to say that if we're grounded, then our state machine will change the state back to the SM idle state. And now in the update physics, we want to override this. 
And after we've called the base update physics, what we want to do is update this grounded value. And the way we're going to do this is by checking two things. The first thing you want to check is that our velocity along the vertical axis is actually negative, because this means that we're falling. Otherwise, what might happen is that when you first jump from the ground, there is this little pack of frames where you're still in contact or you're still very close to the ground, but you're going up. But our logic will think that since you're close to the ground, you are actually grounded. So you're just beginning your jump, but during those little frames, you might be thinking that you're ending it. In order to avoid this little logic error, we're going to check that we're actually going down and so that our velocity is negative. So we're going to say that grounded. First check that the sm.rigidbody.velocity.y is less than this matf epsilon we talked about in the previous tutorial. Remember, this is just a really small value and it's a way of ensuring that you are somewhat less than zero, even taking into account the float approximation errors. This is the first part. This is to check that you're actually falling down. And the second thing you want to check is that you are touching the ground. Because remember, what we want to check is that we were jumping and then we are falling down and then we are now touching the ground again, so we should be grounded. And the way we're going to do this is by saying that we want the sm.rigidbody that is touching layers. And so here we have to pass in our layers. And this is the reason we added a physics layer before. This is because it will greatly optimize this search. Since Unity here, we'll just have to compute whether our player object is touching or not objects on the ground layer. And so it won't check against all the other objects in the scene. If we were to have some, it will greatly optimize the whole checking process. Now, the way you define layers in your code, so in your C-sharp scripts, is by using bit shifting. This will look a bit strange at first, but the idea is that you have an int, uh, so I'll just call it ground layer, and it looks like this. So you have one shifted six. Um, I won't go into all the details of bit shifting. Uh, you can check it out on the internet if you want. This is just saying that I'm going to take the unity layer number six, because remember that we put our ground layer into the user layer six earlier. All right, now I can use this variable and I'll just copy it and put it here. And so this line is saying that if I'm falling down, because my velocity is negative, so I'm going down. And if I'm touching anything that has been assigned the ground layer, so the layer number six, then I'm going to be grounded. And if I'm grounded, I should switch back to the idle state in my state machine. The last thing you want to take care of is the enter point of a state. So you want to override the public void enter function. And here we're going to do two things. First, we're going to change the color of our sprite renderer. So I'll just go to one of my other scripts and copy this line and say that here I want to change to something like color green, for example. And the second thing I want to do is add some velocity to the hero, because for now, when you're pressing the spacebar, you're switching to jumping, but you're not moving. So you'll immediately touch the ground and revert back to idle. In order to avoid that, we want to add some vertical velocity to the rigid body so that it really goes up and then falls down thanks to the built-in gravity computation. To do that, we'll just once again take our velocity vector. So we're going to have the vel as rigidbody.velocity. And we're going to say that velocity.y, we added some jump force value. And we're going to define this variable in our movement SM in just a second. Um, but just before we forget, let's reassign our velocity once it's been updated. Now let's define this variable. I'll go back to the movement SM script and where I had the speed, I'll just go ahead and add jump force. I'm going to set this to something like 10. Um, once again, you should try different values and see what you liked the most. Um, I've just found that this one is cool for now. And the last thing you want to do before we go back to our game is to initialize this jumping state, because remember that in the awake, we need to create our states uh, by passing in our state machine. Otherwise, we're going to get a null reference. And now if we go to a Unity project and we run the game, 
we'll see that we still have the idle and moving states, but that if I press the spacebar, I also have a jumping state. Uh, so I change the color to green and I change the label in the top left corner to jumping because my state machine knows that I've transitioned to my jumping state. And the really cool thing is that here I'm going from idle to jumping, but I can also go from moving to jumping. Now, once again, remember that we haven't handled horizontal inputs in the jumping state and we can transition back directly from jumping to moving. So once you're in the air, you can change the course of your player, uh, no matter how hard you press the hour keys on your keyboard. So this is just like going on this parabola and until you've touched the ground, you can change the direction of your hero. But nonetheless, this is really cool because we have successfully managed to go from idle to jumping and then back to idle when we touch the ground. So notice here how as soon as I've collided with the ground, as I've touched an object on the ground layer, I'm just going back to idle state. Something I just like to point out before I end this tutorial is that the reason we're able to handle the spacebar as an input for transitioning from idle to jumping or moving to jumping is because here in our idle and moving scripts, this base update logic line, um, here the, the base has actually changed. So if you put your mouse on the base word uh, in a nice IDE like Visual Studio, you'll be able to see what it refers to. And you see that here the base isn't base state anymore, it's grounded. And so if we were to unravel this update logic, this base update logic, we would get first the base state update logic that doesn't actually do anything. Then we'd get the check for the spacebar. And so if we have the spacebar that is pressed, we're going to the jumping state. And finally, we're going to check for the horizontal input. So this is the reason why this little lines actually encapsulates the fact that both moving and idle states are able to get spacebar input to transition to the jumping state. That's it for today, folks. In this video, we saw how to turn a basic finite state machine into a hierarchical state machine, and we used that to add a jumping state to our 2D player movement. Also, we learned how to use Unity's layers to improve the efficiency of our collisions checks, and we added some vertical velocity to our rigid body to get it to get off the ground. All in all, using the state pattern may create longer code, but it's really great for decoupling behaviors, meaning that different states that react differently to events and show different animations or sounds are neatly stored in different files, which is really great for organizing your projects. If you want to take this one step further, you can take a look at this video by One World Studio that shows you how to implement the state pattern and where the transitions aren't triggered by user inputs, so it's more like an AI behavior. Don't hesitate to post comments with your ideas on how to improve and experiment with this feature. And in the meantime, feel free to like and share this video or to subscribe to my channel so you know as soon as new videos come out. Thanks for watching and take care.